This is the Google Pixel 7a, and I was quite worried about it, although as it turns out, I needn't have been. I'm a really big fan of Pixel phones, particularly the A series, which is Google's budget range. For me, it all started with the 4A, which is just a fantastic little phone. It's a bit flawed, you know, it's plasticky, it wasn't water resistant, it didn't have wireless charging and all that sort of stuff, but the camera was great and it was really cheap, which is what mattered. Then, well, we didn't get the 5A in this country, but we did get the 6A which is, again, a brilliant phone, really steps things up a notch from the 4A. But now we have the 7A. And this is interesting because on the face of it, it doesn't look massively different to the 6A. It's strangely close to the 7, and it's also 50 pounds more expensive. And I've been using this for the last week intensively. This has been my main device for that period, and I found out quite a lot. Right, let's get into the specs, which I'm going to have to read out from here because there are so many numbers involved in smartphone reviews. The Pixel 7a costs £449 in the UK, which, like I mentioned, is £50 more expensive than the 6a. Inside, it's got the Google Tensor G2 chip. It's got a 6.1-inch display with a 90Hz refresh rate, which is new this time around. It's also OLED. It's got a 4,300 milliamp hour battery with fast and, this time, wireless charging. It's got 8 gigabytes of RAM, one storage option which is 128 gigabytes. It's got a 64 megapixel main camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 13 megapixel selfie. But it has definitely stepped up a notch in terms of quality. So if we look at the 7a here, it's got this very nice, it's not glass but it looks like glass backing, it's actually plastic. The 6a has something very similar but I think the biggest difference is the camera handle. Housing. I think the camera housing on the 7a just looks a bit more premium. It comes in four colors. There's charcoal, which is this one, but there's also sea, coral, and snow, which all look really nice, actually. I, I love what Google's doing with the look and feel of this phone. What I don't like is how smudgy it gets. This is a YouTube tech reviewer's worst nightmare. Shooting footage of this and having to continually grab your little cloth and do this is very annoying. Now I know that's not a normal use case and normal people will just get used to the fact that it picks up smudges and fingerprints. This also has a fingerprint reader beneath the display which I wish the iPhone would do. But this time around we also get a face unlock in the front facing camera up here which we didn't have on the 6a and both of those biometric security options work flawlessly. As for the display it's just lovely, it's really nice and responsive. That 90 hertz refresh rate. Now you can't complain now because the budget smartphone from Google has a high refresh rate screen. Okay, it's not 120 hertz, but then if you want that, you go with the 7 Pro. The thing to say about performance is firstly, I don't do benchmarks and I don't play games on smartphones. So I always look at this from a completely normal everyday user perspective. And with that hat on, all of these phones in front of me, including the Pixel 4a, are amazing performers. There's two reasons for this. One of them, particularly with the, the new generation, including the 7a, is that we have got Google's own silicon in there, which is just perfectly fast for these devices. With all these phones, you get the pure Android experience. This is the most unfettered version of Android you're going to find. On the Pixel 7a, when you combine that with the fact that the G2 chip in here is really quick and perfectly serviceable for this sort of phone, this thing absolutely flies. The one thing where it does fall down slightly is the battery life. You don't get two days out of the 7a. You definitely get a day out of it, no problem whatsoever, and it will go into the next day, but that's pushing it. You will find yourself reaching for that charger fairly quickly on that second day. The only thing to know is that the standby time on this phone is very impressive, so if you leave it unattended for a long time or you're just using it sparingly throughout the day, you might creep into two-day territory, but don't expect that. The one thing that is great is the wireless charging that you get with this, but bear in mind it's 7.5 watts rather than the 20 watts that you get on something like the Pixel 7. So it's a bit slower charging wirelessly, but at least it has it. I love 
the Pixel camera system. But it is very subjective. I'll put some on the screen now for you so you can see what I'm talking about. They're very moody, very contrasty, very detailed. And I think the Pixel line is fast becoming one of the only remaining smartphones that has what I'd call a signature photo. So I can tell a Pixel photo a mile off. In terms of video, it's not bad. It's not iPhone level, but I don't think anything is yet when it comes to 4K video on a smartphone. Image quality from this is pretty good. It's nice and sharp. The dynamic range is pretty good. The stabilization is a bit of an acquired taste. It's got this kind of fake gimbal thing going on where if you pan left and right, it does this kind of robotic movement left and right, which doesn't look terrible. But I think if you bear in mind that the people who buy the 7A are gonna be using it to capture life's moments. As long as it looks good and they can share it and they can capture those moments quickly, which you can do with this phone, that's enough. Let's compare the 7A very quickly against the 6A. We have the Tensor G1 chip in the 6A and the G2 chip in the 7A. They both have the same size display, but the 6A has a 60 hertz display. The 7A has a 64 megapixel main camera versus the 12 megapixel camera on the 6A. The 7A has a 13 megapixel selfie camera versus the 8 megapixel selfie camera on the 6A. They both have the same IP67 dust and water resistance rating. The 7A has eight gigabytes of RAM versus the six gigabytes in the 6A. They both have the same storage, which is fixed at 128 gigabytes. And the 7A has face unlock, whereas the 6A only has the fingerprint reader. The other thing to bear in mind is that the 7A, I think, is more premium looking and feeling than the 6A, which I think matters if you're being asked to spend 50 pounds extra on this one. When it comes to photos, again, the 6A still takes some very good photos. The 7A, they, they look a bit better, but there's still not much in it, as you can see from these comparison photos. You really have to A-B test these two cameras to notice the difference. And the only people who do that, as I always say, are reviewers like myself. And I think for that extra 50 pounds, you get quite a bit more for the 7A, plus it's the latest generation, so it's obviously a newer phone. Right, the Pixel 7A versus the Pixel 7. This is interesting. So the price difference between these two phones is £150. However, they both have the exact same chip. They have the same eight gigabytes of memory. The Pixel 7a only has that one 128 gigabyte storage option, whereas the 7, you can go up to 256 gigabytes. They both have an OLED 90 hertz display, but the Pixel 7a is slightly smaller. So this one has a 6.1 inch display versus a 6.3 inch display. The 7a has an IP67 dust and water resistance rating, whereas the Pixel 7 has an IP68 rating. They both have wireless charging, but the wireless charging on the 7 is 20 watts versus the 7.5 watts on the 7A. The camera on paper is where things get interesting. So the Pixel 7 has a 50 megapixel sensor, but the 7A has a 64 megapixel sensor and it's a different sensor. That said, the pixels on the 7 are slightly bigger and this has a marginally bigger Aperture. They both have 8x super res zoom and they both have optical image stabilization. And if we look at these comparison photos, I think they look very similar once again. I think if you could say anything about the Pixel 7 photos is that they are slightly warmer, slightly more vibrant, I think. I think the bokeh, which is the background blur, is slightly more impressive on the 7. Again, you have to A-B test these two photos to see the difference. The good thing is choosing between these two phones is actually very straightforward. Firstly, if you want more storage than 128 gigabytes, then you have to get the 7. Secondly, if you want a very slightly bigger display and you want the IP68 water resistance and you want a slightly better camera or you want the knowledge that you've got those things, then get the 7. If none of that stuff bothers you, get the 7A. For me, the Pixel A series continues to impress. I think this is probably, no, in fact, I, I know now, I've, I've decided right here, right now, that the A series Pixels are the best 
budget Android phones. And that's because I think they've got the best design. I think the build quality is top notch. They have the best version of Android you're gonna find anywhere. For me personally, they take the best photos. And more importantly, I think Google has added just enough stuff to the 7a to make the 6a feel and look like yesterday's news. I hope that's helped guys, but if you're still thinking about the 7 Pro and the 7 alongside the 7a, I have made a full review video of these two phones. So keep watching for a link to that review.